This is uh, Lesson 1.03, Distributions in Integrated Math 3, Mr. Mellinger's class. So we're going to go ahead and give you the solutions, about 25 or 26 problems here. Uh, but they're fairly quick. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Now, this is, um, this is a um, normal distribution, and it shows you the breakdowns of the different number of standard deviations. So what we can do is this. Let's draw a line down the middle of this. And we remember there's 34% of that 68, that's half of it, is on the right side and 34% is on the left. For two standard deviations, it's 95. So that means 47.5 is on the left side and 47.5 is on the right side. And the last part we're going to simplify. Um, we're not going to include this little uh, fringe part out here. So we're going to assume that 100% of it, like on one of the earlier assignments, is between plus and minus three standard deviations. So we're going to just call this 50%. And over here, 50%. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So. The first question uh, is on the math portion of the SAT, the scores are roughly normally distri distributed. And remember, all these rules about standard deviations apply to a normal distribution, one of these bell curves. If it's skewed, it changes everything. But for this, um, uh, it's a normal bell curve. This would be correct. So the mean is 500 and the standard deviation is 100. So if you look at that, there's the mean. Plus one standard deviation is plus 100. That gets you to 600 plus two standard deviations plus another 100 gets you to 700 and one more gets you three standard deviations gets you to 800 and then in the other direction it's minus 100 minus 200 minus 300 for one two and three standard deviations okay so let's go ahead and answer these questions so what percentage of scores are above are above 400 all right so Here's 400 and above is to the right. So they want to know how many percentages, what percentage there is over here. Well, here's the thing. From the mean to the far right is 50%. That's half the scores. So this is 50% or I'm tracing my pencil from the mean to there. But they want to know from here over to there. So I have to add this little part in here. So it would be 50% plus this right here. And what is that? That's 34%. So the answer would be 50%, that's everything to the right of the mean, plus the 34% that's in this area, and that would give you 400 and above. So it's 84%. Okay, what percentage of the SAT scores are above 500? Well, this is an easier question. There's 500, it's the mean, excuse me, it's the median. It is the mean, but it's the median. That's what we're interested in. Because 50% of the scores, whatever the mean is, 50% of the scores are always above the median. That's the definition of median. So 500 and above is this half over here. So that would be 50% of the scores. So 50% are above the median. What percentage of SAT scores are below 700? So let's pull it down. Let's look at what they're talking about. So they want to know from 700, everything to the left. That's below 700. Okay. So let's look at that. 50% of the scores are below the median. So that would be from here all the way to the left. That's 50%. Then in order to get from here to 700, you need this much, 47.5. That's two standard deviations. So it's going to be 50%. That's the half of the curve that's over on the left, plus 47.5. And that's going to equal 97.5% are below 700. So from here to here, so this half of the curve is 50% of the scores. And then from 500 to 700, that's two standard deviations, that's 47.5%. So add 50 plus 47.5, and that will get you up there.
All right, between what two values do 95% of the SAT scores lie? Well, that's between plus and minus two standard deviations. Okay, you can see that right here. So that would be between 300 and 700. From here to here, 300 to 700. You don't have to write big long sentences here, just give me the answer and that's fine. Sometimes I do want you to write sentences, complete sentences, and I'll tell you when that is. Okay, what is the score of a person who scores higher than 84% of the people who take the SAT? All right, so what is 84%? So that means they're above 84%. So if you start here and go to the median, that's 50%. If you go one more standard deviation from here to here, that's 34%. So 50% plus 34 more percent is 84%. So the answer would be, they, they want to know what that score is. That score is 600. 600 is one standard deviation above the mean. And one standard deviation above the mean is better than 84%. This entire area that I'm tracing over with my pencil, that's 84%. 50 plus 34 is 84 and that's at 600. All right, given an approximate normal, okay, these are, this is a new question set. So the question six through 12. So given an approximate normal distribution with a mean of 175 and a standard deviation of 37. So let's just go ahead and calculate up here, or just put down the numbers. So 175 is the mean, that's mu. 1SD, one standard deviation, is 175 plus 37. That gets you to 212. Two standard deviations, you add another 37, and that gets you up to 249. And three standard deviations is going to be another 37, so that would be 49, 59, 69, 79, 86. 286. Now, going in the other direction, you have to subtract 37. So, minus one standard deviation is going to be 175 minus 37 and that's going to be two, uh, 138 minus two standard deviations is going to be minus another 37 which is going to be 101 and minus three standard deviations is going to be another 37 and that's going to be 64. So that's everything. Okay, so now they say draw a normal curve and label one, two, three standard deviations. So we pretty much did that, but let's just do it. They asked us to do it. Draw it kind of wide so that your numbers don't get too crowded together like that. Okay, that's supposed to be symmetrical even. I did the best I could. Okay, so right here is 175. Here's one standard deviation. And we already said what that is, it's 212. Here's two standard deviations. It should be the same distance, actually. So let me do it a little better than that. And that's going to be 249. And then the rest of it all the way over to the end is going to be 3, and that's going to be 286. In the other direction, it's going to be 138. It's going to be 101. And over here is going to be 64. Okay. And I was a little off screen there, so there you see. It's the same numbers I have up here. Okay, so it just looks something like that. Just freehand it. Do the best you can. Okay. What percent of values are within the interval 138 to 212? Well, that's one standard deviation in each direction. Minus one, plus one. So that's going to be 68% of the values. What percent of the values are between 101 and 249? So that's two standard deviations in both directions. That's 95% of the values. Okay, what about 64 to, to uh, 286? So that's three standard deviations in both directions. And we're gonna say that's 100%, just to keep it simple. 
everything's within three. There's a little bit outside as we know, but we're gonna go ahead and just say it's 100% or within three standard deviations. What percent of the values are outside of the interval 138 to 212? Okay, so 138 to 212 is one standard deviation in either direction. And we know that that's 34, 34, that's 68%. So the entire curve is 100%. So if you wanna know what's outside of this line, that's to the left of this line and to the right of this line, that's outside of that 138 to 212, it's going to be 100% minus these two together, minus 68. So it's 100% minus 68. 100% is the whole curve minus the part that's between these two numbers. And that equals 32%. So if you looked at this curve, 16% would be over on this side and 16% would be over on that side and that adds up to 32% are outside of this area one standard deviation. Okay, keep going. What percent of values are outside of the interval 101 to 249? So that's two standard deviations. And we've said that two standard deviations covers 95% of the values. So if you take the entire curve 100% and take away what's inside of two standard deviations, 95%, because that's what they want. They want to know what's outside of that. That's going to be 5% of the values. 2.5% on each side. All right, what percent of the values are outside of 64 to 286? That's three standard deviations. We're gonna say it's all of them, okay? So we're gonna say, we're gonna say zero in other words. Zero percent are outside of three standard deviations. Again, technically there's a little bit the way they show it on this graph over here, that three standard deviations is 99.7. So according to this, it would have been 0.3%. But we're just gonna keep the math simple. It's these little areas out here and out here, but we're gonna keep the math simple and just say it's 100%. There's all 0% is outside of three standard deviations. Okay, so here's a new one. Given an approximate normal distribution with a mean of 159 standard deviation of 17. So let's go ahead and draw this again. Mu is 159. One standard deviation is plus 17, so that's going to take uh, you to 276. One seventy-six. One ninety-three. And then this becomes a two ten. Okay, going the other direction. Okay, and mistake here. So 159 goes down to 142. It's okay to make mistakes, just spot them. Always go back and check your work. That's why I saw that. I went back and checked. Okay, you're always going to make mistakes in math. The question is, do you catch them? Do you correct them? Okay, so 142 is then going to go down to 220, uh, 42, 32, 125. And then finally, subtract 17 from 125, and you get 108. So even though I just checked, I'm going to check again. 59, 69, 76 is 17. 76, 86, 93 is 17. 93, 203, 210. Okay. Backwards is 42. Minus 17 is 125. Minus 17 is 108. Okay. There we go. All right, they're asking us to draw the curve again, so we'll draw the curve again. Draw it really wide. Your mean is 159. Okay, there you go, through the curve. Okay, what percent of values are within the interval 142 to 176? So that's one standard deviation, 34 in that direction, 34 in that direction. 
So that's going to be 68. What percent of values are within the interval 125 to 193? That's two standard deviations plus or minus, so that's 95%. And what interval contains 99.7%? And again, we changed that to 100%, but it's three standard deviations. You should put a plus and minus three standard deviations. Okay, so that, that on our scale is going to be 100%. Okay, uh, what percent are above 176? So we come up here. So it's what's above this? So we know that 50% are above the mean, the median. Again, it's not the mean, that is the mean, but it's also the median on a perfect normal distribution. So 50% are above 159. So from here all the way over to here is 50%. But they want to know what's above here. So if you take this distance and subtract this distance, it's 34%. That will give you how many are just above 176. So let me say that again. This entire distance minus this piece of it will give you what's over here. And that's what they want to know, what's above 176. So it's going to be 50% of the values are to the right of the median. But you're going to subtract out the part, the ones that are below 176, below one standard deviation. That's 34%. And that equals 16%. Okay. So 16% of the values are over here. All right, what percent of values are below 125? Okay, so they want to know what's here, what's over in this direction here, what's in that area over there. So again, 50% of the values are below the median of 159, so this is 50%. And we remember that two standard deviations that takes you to 125 is 95% is plus or minus, but half of that is 47.5%. So if I take 50% from the median all the way over to here, 50% median all the way to the left, and I subtract out this part right here, that'll tell me just how what percent is this, and that's what we want to know. What's below to the left of 125? So very simply, that's going to be 50% minus 40. 7.5%, that's two standard deviations, it's two standard deviations just to the left, and that's going to equal 2.5% are below 125. Okay, next, new question, 19 through 26. The incubation time, that's how long it takes for an egg to hatch, if you didn't know that. The incubation time for Rhode Island red chicks is normally distributed with a mean of 21 days and a standard deviation of one day. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw that. Here's 21, that's kind of easy to draw. Here's 21, that's mean, mu. Here's one standard deviation is plus one, that's 22. And going in the other direction, uh, we have negative one standard deviation. Okay, so there we go. Um, all right, so now this adds a little complication. They're not just asking for percentage, they're asking for a number of eggs. So I'll show you how to do that. So if a thousand eggs are being incubated, how many chicks do we expect will hatch between 19 and 23 days? So that's two standard deviations. And two standard deviations, that's between 19 to 23, that's 95%. Are gonna hatch between 19 and 23. That's what two standard deviations mean. So let's deal with the percent. Okay, we haven't talked about this. If you have 95%, how do you work that into a math equation? You really can't multiply 95%. What 
So what you remember is what 95% means. 95% per cent means per 100. It means 95 per 100. That's what per cent means. If you do this on your calculator, 95 divided by 100, you get 0 0.95. So the simple rule of thumb is you take your percent, the decimal's right there, you don't see it, but it's there. You move it over two places to the left. So it goes in front of the nine there, and that gives you the number. Now you have a decimal number you can actually work with, you can actually multiply. So what do we do with that? Well, we say it's 95% of a thousand, that's how many total eggs there are. You can do this on your calculator if you need to, or some of you can look at it and see that that's 950. And you should always put unit of measure, good practice, even though it's math class, put down what it is, 95 what? Um, it's supposed to put a decimal there and that should not be there. So. Oh no, it's not a decimal, it's just a little speck. Okay, so it's 950 eggs. Okay, there you go. So that's how you do the decimal conversion. So you'll get a couple more chances to practice that. Okay, if a thousand eggs are being injured, how many chicks do we expect to hatch in 21 days or fewer? Well, 21 is the mean, median, it's a mean, but it's the median, half or below the median. So half, 50% are down here. That's 21 days or fewer. That's everything to the left of the, of the median. Okay, so what do we do? Same thing. That's half means 50%. There's the decimal, you move it over two places, and that equals 0 0.50. And now you multiply that by a thousand, it's half of a thousand, and that equals 500 eggs. Okay, there's your answer. Okay, okay, next question. Let me erase this. Okay, it says, if a thousand eggs are being incubated, how many chicks do we expect to hatch in 19 days or fewer? So 19 days or fewer is going to be right here that's two standard deviations away and to the left it's everything over in this space here it's not a very big area right there so what do we do well we know that 50 percent are going to be from the median all the way to this far side that's 50 percent of the eggs right there and if we know what two standard deviations is which we do it's half of the 95 percent it's 47.5 so from the median to two standard deviations is 47.5 percent. That's a percent sign. So 50 percent is from the median all the way to the far left and 47.5 is from the median to here. So if you subtract that 50 minus 47.5 that'll give you this number that's going to be 2.5 percent. We'll come down and write it down here. So 50 percent is to the left of the median the left hand side of the curve minus from the median to two standard deviations below is 47.5 you subtract that it gives you this part out here and that's going to be 2.5 percent okay and that's the answer to that oh it's not the answer and I'm sorry I'm off screen I was off screen, so let me say that again. I was trying to show it up here. Um, so what I said was 50%, the left-hand side of the curve, minus two standard deviations is 47.5, and that'll tell us what's outside of two standard deviations. What's what's outside, what's to the left of two standard deviations is 2.5%. But now we got to do that decimal adjustment, so watch this. How does that work with this number? So you move the decimal two places to the left. One, two, that was my little rule. And that empty space you fill in with a zero. So it's actually 0 0.025. And just tradition says that you put a zero in front of a decimal point like that. You don't have to, it doesn't change the value. But it's it's done. So that's the percent in expressed as a decimal. Now it's times a thousand. And that equals 25 eggs. Okay, all right. If a thousand eggs are being incubated, how many chicks do we expect to hatch in 18 to 24 days? So let's come up there and see what that is. So 18 to 24 days is minus three to plus three. 
and technically on that other um, bell curve it was 99.7 but we're saying that a hundred percent fall between negative three and positive three standard deviations so that means all of them so we're going to say 100 percent okay and i don't think i need to convert to a decimal um that's times a thousand uh a hundred percent of a thousand is a thousand we expect them all to take to happen in that time okay all right let's move on we're getting there okay they're going to keep hitting us with egg questions here okay uh 23 if a thousand eggs are being incubated how many chicks do we expect to hatch in 22 days or more so 22 days or more is one standard deviation away from the mean, 22 days. So 50% of the values are from the median all the way to the right side. Median to the right side is 50%. And we know that one standard deviation, that area is 34%. So 34%. So if I have 50%, but I only want to know what's above 22. So if I have 50% and I subtract out that 34% right there, it leaves me with the percent out here. So 50 minus 34 is 16. So 50% on the upper side of the curve minus the 34% that's in one standard deviation. And that's going to equal 16%. Do our little decimal adjustment, one, two places, and you end up with 0.16 times 1,000. And that's going to equal 160 eggs. Next up, a thousand eggs are being uh, incubated. How many chicks do we expect to hatch in 18 to 21 days? Okay, well, 18 is three standard deviations um, to the left. 21 is the mean. So 50% of the values um, are to the left of the median. Okay, again, we're interested in the median, not the mean, even though they both numbers are 21. So half the values are to the left of the median. So that's gonna be 50% right there. So it says, how many chicks do we expect to hatch? So that's going to be 50% from 21 down to 18. That's going to be 0 0.50 times 1,000. And that equals 500 eggs. Okay. Not 5,000. No, you can't make that many eggs. 500. Okay, and there's your answer. All right, almost done. Okay, a thousand eggs are being incubated. How many chicks do we expect to hatch in 19 to 24 days? Okay, so this one's actually a little bit of a complication. It's not an even number in both directions. So 19 to 24. Okay, well, this part from 21 to 24 is 50 percent. If you go back from 21 to 19, that's minus two standard deviations, that's 47.5 percent. So the percentage, if you add 50, that's everything on the right half of the graph or the right half of the bell curve, and then two standard deviations down, that's 47.5. That'll tell you everything from 24 to 19. But the question is asking us, in night, yeah, that's what it's asking us in 19 to 24 days. So it's going to be 50 plus 47.5. And that's going to equal 97.5%. We come down and convert that to a decimal by moving the decimal place over two places. So it's 0.9. 75 times a thousand and that's going to equal 900 975 eggs okay one more uh if thousand eggs are being incubated how many chicks do we expect 
to hatch in 18 days or more. Okay, well we're assuming that everything falls between 18 and 24. So 18 days and more is from here to the right. That's 18 days or more than 18 days. That's 100%. It's all of them. Okay, on, technically on the graph they gave you it would have been 0.3%. We're just gonna not going to say that. We're saying it's 100%. So there we go. That's our answer. Okay, so that takes care of assignment three. Again, always try to do these problems on your own. At least give them about two minutes of thought. Try to set them up. If you don't practice them on your own, you just copy answers. You don't get any better. And then when you get to test time, you're, you're lost. You don't know how to do them. Okay, so practice them and then use my solutions to help you get over the hump. Okay, All right. See you on the next, uh, next lesson.